Hello to you, my fellow dark ones. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Last episode, I did mention what we were going to do this episode, the next one, and the next one. And today, I'm going to change all of that. And I have also spent a good portion of yesterday trying to make an episode, which I also changed that one. So as a result, yeah, there are a few changes around our base. Let's go through them. I think it was the last episode where we made a tier 6 ore miner. So as usual, I decided to do some ore processing. Halfway going through the ore processing, I did notice there are some minerals that we need. For example, bauxite. You get it from aluminium ore, but you get it inside an industrial your grinder from Tech Reborn. Hence, we have a ton of grinders. It's not just for aluminium, it's also for uranium because we get plutonium. And long story short, these are all the ores that have to be processed by an industrial grinder from Tech Reborn. Again, halfway through that, I noticed there is something called fine mineral dust. If you come to the tooltip, it will tell you automate it. I automated that. We can craft it. <laughs> it's really not an amazing recipe, but yeah. We can make it. That was the whole thing that I did and it took hours and hours and hours. Also as a result, we do have a few Tech Reborn machines and a few machines from a mod whose name I shall not mention. Also no clue if fine mineral dust is something that we need today, next week, next month, next year. They should really put extra information on the tooltips. But yeah, we have 50. Anyways, while working through Tech Reborn and nuclear craft, I have noticed that we need to do a few automations. One of them is Borax. Well, the reason that I need borax is that you would be able to make radiation scrubbers, but again, the tooltip tells you, make them passively, both the liquid and the dust. Liquid doesn't really have a use, so I don't know why. Maybe the recipe is locked? Anyways, we need borax. In addition to borax, we are also going to need sulfuric acid, boric acid, hydrofluoric acid, and calcium sulfate. For me, it's a bit of a boring thing to do, but it's part of that mod, so what can I do? Everything that I have mentioned is either going to need oxygen or hydrogen. So we're going to have a bunch of electrolyzers, and by a bunch, I just mean eight. And oh boy, it's slow. Very slow. Why would you make a garbage machine and then require one stack of each and every upgrade for it? Just make a better machine. Anyways, the electrolyzers are going to give us hydrogen, deuterium and oxygen, correct? We want to try and make it look a teeny tiny fancy, so we're going to use tanks from Railcraft. Just to make it slightly fancy, that's it. Okay, so we can't be fancy, it crashes the game. I have already crashed a few times. We go with non-fancy. I think there is a problem with Whaler. Yeah, we will just put them inside the tanks from industrial foregoing. So now let us try to automate a few things that I have just mentioned. The first thing is going to be sulfuric acid. It's my favorite acid, so why not? Sulfuric acid starts with molten sulfur, so we need to export it into an ender chest. Maybe a bit faster. Better. And then wait around 40 minutes just to make one machine. Yay, <laughs> it's ready. <laughs> Anyways, our first machine is the melter obviously. Then we are going to have three chemical reactors, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, sulfuric acid, and then a tank. Sulfuric acid is off the list, now we need boric acid. If I'm not wrong, boric acid does require boron, so we're going to have another export bus with boron, some acceleration cards, and just in case one item frame so that if the ender chests get empty, I will know what I'm doing here. Again, one more melter, two chemical reactors, and we get boric acid. At first I wanted to do it on this side, but I decided to make extra sulfuric acid. Because the thing is, in order to make the hydrofluoric acid, we need the sulfuric acid and fluoride water and I wanted to keep a backlog of both of them. Anyways, for hydrofluoric acid, what we're going to need are a few rock crushers to get fluorite, obviously. In any other mod pack, what we do is that we will have three rock crushers, one for granite, diorite, and one for andesite. That basically gives us all the resources that we want, but here we need one extra, one for basalt, because that's going to give us rare earth, and unfortunately in this mod pack, rare earth has a use in order to get yttrium and barium, and that is basically all the resources that we needed. I do have a we find the MC link exporting the different rocks. And even though I'm not a fan of storage buses, we kind of need one over here so that we would be able to read everything in our system. Perfect. We have done the rock crushers in order to obtain fluorite. Now that we have it, let's use it. I am using different colors of smart cables so that they don't connect and I don't have to use cable anchors. Otherwise, you don't have to be lazy you can use fluids. Hydrochloric acid only has two steps. One of them is a fluid enricher. We enrich water with crushed fluoride. That does give us fluoride water. We can output to the right. Put it inside a chemical reactor. Oh, 
water. Uh, symmetry is important. This is why I have a conduit here. Fluoride water goes inside the chemical reactor and we get hydrofluoric acid as well as calcium sulfate solution. Hydrofluoric acid goes inside the tank and the calcium sulfate goes inside a crystallizer so that we get calcium sulfate. And that goes into an ender chest, which trust me, it's down there. So those two are off the list as well. Now we need to fix borax. A few episodes ago, somebody left me a comment that he's struggling how to make borax or maybe I thought he was struggling. I have been checking the recipe and it seems that you need like three machines in order to make borax dust. Granted, there is a more horrifying method, which I can't even find the root of it. But at this very moment, the way that we're going to get borax dust is going to be super simple, meaning that we are going to get sodium fluoride, put it inside a fluid enricher, enrich it with water that gives us sodium fluoride solution. In a chemical reactor, we mix it with boric acid and we get borax solution and we get hydrofluoric acid back. Uh, that's a problem. Is it a problem? Well, we can always put it back into the system, I guess. Yeah, goes here into the tank. The borax solution goes inside the crystallizer and we get borax. That's it. Eventually, we are going to do the complicated version of this using molten sodium hydroxide and fluoromethane because I think in the long run, we are also going to need methanol, ethanol and all the other garbage. But for now, I have borax. I'm happy. Another thing is that uh, we're extremely short on oxygen. We are using a lot of that in order to make sulfuric acid. So we're going to have eight more electrolyzers. Why not? Again, remember that we needed borax in order to make radiation scrubbers. Unfortunately, we can't do it really at this very moment because it does require uranium-235. And well, we don't have it yet, but once we set up the reactor, we should be able to get some radiation scrubbers to cancel the radiation. And for me, that was basically the main point. However, a few minutes ago, I received a very important comment, which is actually very relevant to what I wanted to do next. So there is something called the Dark Star Crystal. It does have EMC. You can use it in place of aquamarine inside the light well to get starlight. The tooltip tells you that it's found in a high place. And well, that someone told me that high place is the aether. So thank you, wise person. What is this? Actually, we need that, right? I think. Oh, hello. So many spawners. What the hell? Oh. I had no idea this is going to be so easy. I just came here to gather some blocks. Okay, we go home. So Mr. Bean Launcher, sorry I killed you. You still have to put the Dark Star Crystal inside the light well in order to get some starlight. But there is a better version called the Starlight Sphere. I don't know what spellcraft means. In the mod pack, obviously. Well, for starlight, I'm not really going to load a chunk for that. We're just going to set it up in the tower, say that we have finished the roof. Yes, it's working. Perfect. And also for now, we just put everything inside the drum. We need a lot of starlight. Because one of my biggest problems at this very moment is my lack of xanite. Yes, you can find the ore in the aether, but there is another way. There is something called a gravitite enchanter and you can convert ender amethyst with some starlight into xanite. That's actually not the only thing it does. You can also get ambrosium and you can also get enchanted gravitite. So that is something that I really want to make and it's not that expensive. Although the expensive part is the amount of starlight that I need. We managed to get a block of curium 246. Uh, we're going to save on 95% of the fluid and a dark star collector gives us also a 20 times speed bonus. Probably I can't make it, right? No, <laughs> forget it. Maybe we just make more light wells. Why not? This is not really relevant, but I was in the aether, I thought, why not defeating some of the bosses? They give you trinkets, and I like trinkets. And for the first time, I even have a cape. And besides, killing the bosses is relatively easy. Always gives you the same thing. Honestly, the main thing that I'm looking for, I already raided this place, is the Valkyrie cape. It looks nice, that's it. This is probably the third or fourth one I have visited. Let's see if I can find the cape. Nope, just the armor. I didn't find the cape, but at least we do have a nice armor in our collection. It's good. Oh, and yes, I got the Valkyrie gloves. Twice. I thought since I look very fancy, maybe I should get a brand new chest plate. Everything that I look at is very expensive. Purple dragon steel is the best, but uh, yeah, haven't found a dragon. I guess we just go with ender plate. Why not? The other one is very expensive. So dark steel and the ender plate. Does it look better? Oh my goodness, never mind. I had a crimson praetor armor. This looks the fanciest. And yeah, we're in the between lands. Oh my goodness. Everybody has a lot of hit points. We have to break the spawner. Yep, much better. This is the first time I'm doing all of these things alone. Normally, Prince Thomas was here. I killed him. 
unfortunately. Also, if you're wondering what the hell is happening, they're spawning in the walls, they're suffocating. This is why we have weird noises. I hate these guys the most. Everybody wants to kill me, which is fine. Everybody does that anyways. Don't <laughs> jerk. It's fine, we are going to cheat. We have a jetpack. I destroyed the spawners and it seems the tower is collapsing. Why are you dropping chunk loaders? I don't know. Now we can break it, right? Yep, we can take some fancy blocks. The main reason that I came to the between lands was not to do the tower. The tower was just next to the portal. I missed it. The main main reason that I came over here was for the jars. Because in one of them, you would be able to find something called a Spectrous Seed, and that's what I wanted. Anyways, I did manage to find just the one inside the jars. So maybe from next episode, we need to have a base of operations in the between lands. That's a mummy, I know. I just wanted to make some food. That's it. Yes, as I was saying, from next episode, we are going to have a base of operations in the between lands because we need to do so many stuff over here, including farming. Just a bit of farming, though. Not so much. Okay, so I'm back in the overworld and let us get a bit serious. We're going to start by making two multi-blocks. The first one is going to be the Gravitite Enchanter. So there you go. And for the moment, let us try to assemble it. Nice. Missing structure, what? Why did you miss something then? Oh, this is energy input. <laughs> Made the wrong one. So ignore the boo-boo, but this machine does work with starlight, so I do have an ender tank. And this is why we automated starlight earlier today. In order to be able to auto-craft with this machine, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have another smart cable, an interface, an encoded ender chest, and as usual, an indicator that what the hell does this ender chest do? So a block of gravitite. The machine is going to convert the ender amethyst into zanite, blocks of platinum and ambrosium into gravitite, and of course golden carrots to ambrosium. I think there is a bit more it can do. That's not bad. We might need to have the ice shards, is the thing. Blueberries into enchanted berries, which I believe it does have a use in this mod pack. Everything does. And for now, that's basically it. All the patterns go inside the interface and we're good to go. So the ME interface is going to insert the items into this ender chest and we put it inside the machine. And whenever everything is done, we just import it back into our system. So let's order one gravitite. Oh. Block of platinum. We're gonna eat through the platinum. So let's see if we can craft one. I think it's going to be incredibly slow until we augment it with a Korean block. Are you done? Oh, you are done. That was fast. How about Xanite? No, it's decently fast. It's just that it's going to eat through the starlight. The reason that we made this machine is that in order to make a fission reactor casing from a mod whose name I shall not mention, you need to have empowered gravitite, which is basically gravitite in an empowerer. However, the second machine that we're going to make, which is not very relevant at this stage, is going to be the Carmenite Empowerer Controller. This dude over here, what does it do? Makes us maze wafers. You know, you give it perdicio, bread, and you get a maze wafer. And this one is incredibly slow, one minute for a wafer. Why do we need wafers? Not to eat them. In order to make the machine structure from advanced rocketry. So let's assemble that one too. I just wanted to mention that this is a very ugly machine. Super ugly. Let's not carry all the blueprints, we put them inside the machines. But this machine that we just made, the carbonite reactor, does require Essentia in order to operate. And it does have an Essentia input hatch. I have been checking and unfortunately, it's a bit stupid. I think we do need to have a directional Essentia tube. Yeah. Like that. Because you put Essentia in it and it puts it back in the jar. I have never used this. Uh, how do you work? Do you put it back? No. You're also not really inputting it. It's fine, I can use jars. For now, later on we're going to solve the problem. We put in some bread and on the other side we should get wafers? Oh, it takes a minute. Okay. I forgot. We do have a decent supply of wafers, but then again, we also need tons of machine casings from advanced rocketry. So our supply was never going to be enough. However, for this machine to work a teeny tiny bit faster, we can use an empowered maze stone. It doesn't really say what it does, but I'm assuming that's going to boost the speed. So for that, we need to do the ram quest in the twilight forest and I have prepared all the wool. And what we're looking for is an enchanted forest. Okay, let's go. 3000 blocks. Yeah, we're gonna fly. Okay, I found the ram. We give you every single color of wool. Are we good? You have everything. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, fading wool. We learn it. Another thing which I just remembered is that I don't really have the maze breaker, so maybe we should visit the maze one more time. What's up there? A crimson portal. These are blocks of ironwood. Hello, boys. I'm just taking some blocks. Is it up? Is it down? Am I in the correct spot? Oops. Maze breaker. 
Well, we got it. <laughs> so who cares? I believe the block goes there and the essential thingy on top. All the essential is gone. Oops, it's fine. I just smelted some. Seems a bit faster. I'm not sure about the speed. Also, it doesn't really say what it does. <laughs> it's a finicky machine. What can you do? Before wrapping up today's episode, there are two things that I really want to try and do. One of them is regarding the empowerer. So one of the things that you might notice is that in order to make a fission reactor casing, we need empower gravitite. We have already taken care of the gravitite, but we need palace, we need enori, we need void, and we need restonia. Well, basically we need everything on auto crafting. And there are are also way more recipes so i think what we are going to do is that we're going to have 10 empowers we have already done something similar in project ozone in order to make capacitors so why not we can do it here too why is it so hard to center everything yeah it should have been there okay that's a very tall tower i'm just saying Okay, so as it turns out, in order to do every single empower recipe individually, you need 11 of them. There's absolutely nothing else in the JEI, and besides, later on, there is going to be a mythic processor, Empowerer. We can't really make it at this very moment, it's horrifying. Very horrifying. The logic behind the Empowerer is incredibly simple, it's just a matter of filtering, which makes it super grindy. Because I think I have to install 55 filters? individually. I think we will just do one together and the rest I will do on my own. So the first one is going to be Empowered Restonia. I already put redstone, this is for bricks, this is nether bricks, red dye, oops, and obviously the block of Restonia in the center. To import back everything into the system, we're also going to have a filter so that we don't import the incorrect stuff. That's it. Let me set up the rest of the filters. I'll be right back. It has been a while later and I have set up all the filters, even for things that we don't really need. Well, at least we don't need them at this very moment. For example, there is a twilight essence, there is a refraction focus key, rift essence, and empowered canola. But I thought if I'm setting up filters, let's do all of them. You know, you just drag and drop from the JEI, so you don't actually need to craft any of them. Anyways, at our garbage setup over here, it's actually not garbage, it's quite decent. We're going to have another interface and one ender chest, and this one is the color of the flag of France, so that I would remember. From now on, we just go with flags, so that I don't get confused with all the ender chests. All the patterns go in, and there's 11 of them. I think you need a capacity card? Oh, it went in. Oh, pattern expansion card. Aha. Uh -huh. Wrong one. Yeah, we have one more row and we can have the two additional patterns. So now if we hook up this ender chest over here, you know, the flag of France, give everything a teeny tiny bit of power like so. We should be able to auto craft a lot of things. So gravitite. Can you do that? I hope I haven't messed up any recipes. You're not going in. How does the empowerer accept I- Oh, it's not connected. I thought I made a boo-boo. Apparently, I have not. We just need to connect the conduit and that's it. Yeah, it's working. Lovely. And it should be decently fast. You say that and after around 10 seconds, nothing happens. Okay, now something happened. And that is the gravitite. Perfect. Obviously, we can just cover everything and make some sort of a tower. But I thought maybe we should do the same thing that we did in Project Ozone. Meaning that we hook up a comparator to the display stands and then have a lamp. In order to just make it a bit fancy. So if we order Restonia, this lamp should turn on, right? Yes. Don't like the color. We go with purple? Oh, it's difficult to break. Yeah, we go with purple. Why not? I'm not really sure actually, kind of like the red. I thought it's going to be a tedious job, it's actually not. Let's go fancy. Because you just have to climb and switch blocks, that's it. It hasn't been a crazy amount of time later, but I have finished the tower. And I'm really happy with this one. Really. And yes, there are gateways, they don't really go anywhere. We have to expand. We expand or we die. No, that's the Roman motto. But if I order a few different types of blocks, uh, it's gonna look a bit fancier. You see, the lamps are on. I like that. It's an indication that everything is working. It can also be an indication that everything is stuck, but this is nice. Yeah, everything is done. Lamps are off. I'm not that far away from our base, and do you guys remember this rift? So, it has grown. I wanted to close it, but apparently it does give you world threads. And a lot of that. You see, it's everywhere. That was amazing. 
<laughs> I wasn't doing anything special, I was just flying around to see that if we want to expand, which direction should we expand? I'm not really a fan of the enchanted forest, the leaves look weird. It's fine, we will think of that later. Anywho, the final thing that I want to do for today is that we need to make an arc furnace in order to get a few things including chrome. If you guys remember, I have already set a pattern for the fine mineral dust and there's no problem of crafting it, even though it does require chrome. The problem is that production of chrome is incredibly slow. If we come over here, you might notice that I have an electrolyzer and we're electrolyzing ruby dust. That gives us a uh, chrome dust. However, chrome has a seed and we can even pulverize the chrome ingot to get chrome dust. There is also something called a bloodmaster metal ingot, which you also have to make it inside an arc furnace. Well, not that one, but the different random steel ingots from blood magic. This is why we have automated the different types of demonic will and we also need that ingot in order to convert it into blood infused dimensional ingot to make different types of warpers, 19 of them in total. That's a lot of dimensions. Anyways, let's talk about chrome. We need steel sheet metal and I'm hoping the engineering blocks are not going to be that expensive. No, all of them are fine. Actually, for some reason, they're super cheap. So fear not, I shall get the rest. I do have a feeling that is the arc furnace. Oh, there is a hologram, but I never make it. This went well, although we are going to need electrodes. What? Oh, this is super enchanted. The normal one will do. As a person who has been raiding a lot of immersive engineering houses, I never took the blueprint. I did check. Unfortunately, it doesn't really have a recipe. We need an engineer. Come forward. I won't kill you. I promise. Nobody of interest. You're an electrician. You're garbage. Yeah, I need to find villages which are intact that I haven't destroyed. It's fine. We will find one. Wrong engineer. Structural engineer. Oh, you're the wrong one. Oh, you should be a machinist. My bad. Yes, that guy. Hey, you stop spawning. We don't need the rest. Don't talk with my machinist. Hello. Uh, I have made some apples. Are you gonna unlock anything? How do I feed it to you? Don't really know. The apple is useless. You're selling me garbage. I'm not very happy. Yes, the electrodes. And I guess we don't need you. Oh, I missed one. So here is my electrode and I have also just realized something incredibly important. This one can be super enchanted and the enchantment is amazing. Also, I should remember to make an HOP graphite seed. What happened to my electrode? You didn't give it to me. Do I have it? Yeah. So this is going to be unbreaking. I have no idea what that number is. 130 something. I mean, I can use the enchantment for myself. It's incredibly cheap. However, for the moment, let us just get some chrome. Do you work? Yes, very slowly. It shouldn't be slow. Is it because I have only one electrode? Well, we are going to have enough HOP graphite to make the seed, so I'm not that worried. Let's make two more electrodes. Oh, now it's working. I have made a seed for HOP graphite and one for chrome. And obviously both of them are now 10, 10, 10. Let's plant them. So here is free chrome and here is free HOP graphite. Now the question is, how much does it cost to take it out? The enchantment? 1,500 levels. Can I do it here? Nope. That's a shame. Well, at least we have an electrode which doesn't break. Unless I can use the tombstones mod. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> nice. So I have a shield from the Aether. It doesn't get repaired, which doesn't go inside the enchantment applicator. What goes in? The Crimson Praetor. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it will never ever break. And actually making the electrodes is super easy. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.